and good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to open this New Britain Board of Education regular school board meeting. The date is October 7th. The time is 6.03 p.m. Uh, can we all um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Uh, Mr. Rivera, can you give us the pledge? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Edwards, roll call, please. President Joseph Lister. Here. Vice President Barbara Marino. Here. Secretary Diane Mayo. Here. Anthony Kane with the C. Yo. Salvador Escobar. Here. Anthony Kane with the K. Here. Andy Parker. Here. John Pina. Here. Jose Rivera. Here. Cantina Centeno. Right here. Thank you. And now for a moment of meditation, uh, if we could all keep the um, people down south uh, in our thoughts with all the destructive hurricanes um, that hit and are on their way. And one year anniversary. The one year anniversary. Yes. Thank you. Now I'd like to open up public participation. Um, I don't have anyone on our list. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the board? I see John McNamara. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Is this on? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. You really yes. need the microphone? <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, John McNamara, 56 Brighton Street. I'm uh, an alderman from Ward 4. I'm just uh, uh, here to call your attention to two resolutions before the City Council that have come up that are going to committee. Uh, one of them has to do with amending the Code of Ordinances to uh, give the Council authority over naming school facilities and all municipal facilities. Uh, this matter has been referred on, in regular order to uh, committee. Um, it would as far as I can tell, void your current policy on naming school facilities. Um, needless to say, I'm going to oppose this resolution, um, and I'll be urging my colleagues uh, on the Common Council to do the same. And I just want to alert you that on October 22nd, there will be a hearing and a committee meeting in the Council, in Council Chambers, about, I think it's at 6 o'clock. Uh, the second resolution has to do with uh, uh, public bids and the contracting for what I can see is maintenance, deferred maintenance, uh, renovations of uh, municipal buildings and facilities that has created a, a, a list of 19 uh, businesses to act and, uh, and do repairs and maintenance of all kinds. Uh, at your buildings and in municipal buildings. Um, I call this back for reconsideration. Um, there's, we have some real questions about it with regard to the charter and the bidding, our bidding procedures under the charter. Uh, I think the intent is very good to repair and make city buildings safe in a timely manner. Uh, and everybody wants that. Uh, but we do have questions about the bidding I just mentioned that in the city charter, if there is an emergency, if there's an immediate need, uh, the mayor and the city can act uh, to fix a boiler, as was pointed out during this discussion when it came up to the council, or to, or to meet an emergency need. But we just have to, uh, in the interest of uh, wise use of public dollars and uh, the timing of it, which is two years as proposed, with renewables with the same list up to five years. So we, we want to have a discussion about it before proceeding, amending, or deciding not to support it. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on those two things, and uh, thanks for your time this evening. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Anyone else that would like to address the board? Anyone else? Okay, with that, we will close public participation and begin reports, uh, starting with the superintendent's report. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as has become my tradition, the board has before it a, a preview copy of our beautiful district dispatch. Uh, I'm going to start calling this a magazine rather than a newsletter because I think it deserves to be called a magazine. Um, as usual, uh, we take a lot of pride in, in showing off the really great and wonderful staff we have and the, and the wonderful things that we do here in the district. I want to pay a special thank you personally to the variety of staff members who made nominations for the Superintendent's Challenge Coin since the last time you saw this publication. So uh, really nice. You've got uh, quick summaries on uh, nine staff members and some students who received these awards. Of course, we want to recognize that we're celebrating um, Hispanic Heritage Month, which is on the cover and with a feature article, and lots of other really, really uh, nice things that are going on in our school district. Also getting ready to release our first pep talk um, podcast featuring um, uh, Isaias, who was our student MC at Convocation. It was really great to talk to him last year. For the remainder of my time, I'm going to turn it over to our partners from uh, New Britain Recoveries who have a, a data presentation for <coughs> us tonight. Welcome. And you can introduce yourself to the board, please. Thank you. So, I'm Emily Rosenthal. I work as the Director of Community's Grant Evaluator with the New Britain Local Prevention Council. And I'm really excited to be here with Omar. Um, I'm going to talk about my slides here. Okay, so thank you for giving us some time today. We wanted to just share some brief results from our Youth Voices Count Survey that we implemented in schools last year. This is a very brief overview with some highlights. The full report with a lot more data is on our website. But some quick background. So we did conduct this survey in the schools last February and March. Students in grades 6 through 12 did participate in the survey. It asks about youth lifestyles, substance use, mental health, and related risk and protective factors. We were able, um, thanks to a super partnership with the school district to implement the survey in 2022 as well. So we're starting to gather some trend data to see how things are changing and how the local prevention council can really work to meet the needs of the students in the district. Uh, the survey is completely anonymous, no identifying information is collected, and students are notified in advance as well as their parents and guardians of the survey, their right to opt out at any time before or during the survey. So quick overview, we had a great response rate. Over 3,000 students in grades 6 through 12 did complete the survey. Response rates varied um, with a high among sixth graders to uh, it sort of reduces over time amongst high school students, which is not unusual in other districts who do similar surveys. You'll see in the full report that we are able to do subgroup analysis based on race, ethnicity, gender identity, which offers some really interesting information I would encourage you to take a deeper look into. And then this just has our confidence interval, so you can see here that's like our margin of error, where we feel really good about the validity and the reliability of the data. <coughs> so a few highlights. We do ask students in this survey, which I should say this survey is based on national and state instruments. It's using many other districts across the state of Connecticut. Um, we asked students, do you have one adult in your life that you can share with? Because we know that having a trusted adult in a young person's life is a significant protective factor. And you'll see here between 82 and 86% of students do report that they have a trusted adult, which is fantastic. Um, I've shared this information with members of our youth council, and one thing that we heard from the students is that's great, but that also means that 14 to 17% of our students don't have even one trusted adult in their life. So I think you know, we share this information to sort of you know, give a brief snapshot, but also remind folks that really anyone can be that trusted adult for a child. Uh, we also ask, do they feel safe in their community? About three quarters of students said they feel safe in their community, and between 60 and 67% said they felt safe in school. And we asked about, do they know where to get help with a substance use problem or a mental health issue? Just about three quarters do. So that's a lot of the work that we do. The local prevention council is letting families and kids um, know the resources. There are a lot of resources available. Go back. 
Um, so we ask about gaming and social media, and I wanted to just share the social media assets and consequences we ask students, because this is a hot topic for teachers and administrators and parents, a lot of concern, rightly so, but I share this because the students demonstrate a lot of insight, I think, and reflection, and you'll see in the results that a third of students say, yes, I haven't had a hard time stopping, scrolling. They say, yes, I have seen things or heard things that my parents or guardians would think is inappropriate. They recognize the consequences, but then also <coughs> there are some assets. So for example, you'll see about uh, two thirds of the way down on this, somewhere between 56 and 60% of young people say they feel more connected with others as a result of social media. And what we find when we look further at the data is that that's often kids who maybe, um, you know, feel that they don't quite have their place at school or they identify as LGBTQ+. And online or social media can be a place where they find their people. So I, I, I share this with you to just sort of give a sense of it's nuance. There's a lot of challenges, but there are some benefits in particular for some more vulnerable students. We also about um, experiences of bullying, if students have experienced bullying in the schools or at home and what it looks like. So 11% of students in grades 6 through 12 did report experiencing bullying in the past month. So a small number, that's great. When we ask about what kind of bullying, you'll see here, it's more sort of the invisible bullying. So we, when we think about bullying, you know, getting tossed around or thrown in a locker or whatever it is, it's not, they're experiencing, you know, their rumors, being called names or feelings of exclusion. So it's harder to intervene in that sort of experience. Um, we also, you'll see in the full report, we ask where bullying takes place. And when I presented this data with the um, leadership team administrators, they were surprised to see that students report experiencing bullying in the classroom. And teachers are like, how can that possibly be? But you see that it's this sort of exclusion that students are feeling this way. So thinking about acts of kindness and what meanness looks like in the classrooms. We also ask about mental health. Um, these trends are not what any of us want to see in terms of anxiety and depression. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, they're not unique to New Britain. We're seeing rates of anxiety and depression have been going up steadily since before COVID, and these numbers are very similar to other communities. So a quarter of students reported feeling panic, fear, anxiety, always or almost always in the past year. And then 26% reported feeling sad or hopeless so much that it stopped them from doing their usual activities for two or more weeks in a row. And then 12.5% reported having considered suicide. So concerning numbers, I know this is not new information I'm sure to anyone in this room, but sometimes it helps students to hear that they maybe aren't the only ones, that they're not alone in feeling some of these feelings and that there are resources to help them. Um, we also asked about thoughts of self-harm and engaging in self-harm behaviors, you'll see here. Um, one thing I think is interesting is that when you look, the green bar is middle school age students, the blue is high school, and then the purple is all ages grades 6 to 12. There's not a lot of differences we see when it comes to depression um, and anxiety for grade level. Middle school students are experiencing pretty similar levels of anxiety and depression as older students. So we hope to see these trends sort of slowing down a little bit over time. When we ask students what's stressing them out in their life, the major stressors are academics and post high school plans. That's what's stressing kids out, followed by their schedule, some friend stuff, home family life. So far and away, academics and what they're going to do after high school are boring kids, and maybe they're spending time thinking about it. We also ask, um, so our Drug Free Communities grant that the City of Britain received is a five-year grant with an option to reapply for another five years. It brings in a lot of funding for our programming, and as part of that, we are required to track trends around substance use, in particular alcohol and cannabis. So we ask about past month, past 30-day use, and lifetime use. Past month use is a better indicator of regular use. So for example, you might have a student who tried alcohol when they were 14 or 15 and never drank again. 
What we care about is kids who are using the last month. And you'll see here that cannabis is the most, or marijuana is the most frequently used substance. So just over 8% of high school students reported last month cannabis use. Um, and then baby products followed by alcohol. Probably again, not super surprising. What I do think is helpful is sharing this information with students because this is a, you know, this goes up to 9%. The vast majority, more than 90% of the students in your schools are choosing not to use substances. We really want to emphasize the healthy choices they're making, the positive choices, and normalizing that so that students aren't thinking, well, everyone's using, you know, you walk in the bathroom and it smells like someone's been vaping or smoking in there. That could be one or two kids. Not everyone in the school is using these substances. So this data helps us normalize all the great choices that 90% plus of kids are making. I did want to share this slide. This looks at the difference between students who identify as female and students who identify as male. What you'll see here, the blue line is girls, and girls are using all substances at higher rates than boys other than tobacco, traditional tobacco products. They're vaping more, they're using alcohol more, and they're using cannabis more. And I know personally, I'm surprised to see this data, and I'm always surprised to see it. And so it sort of helps us focus in on what's happening with our girls. We know girls are experiencing depression and anxiety at higher rates, and we see that they're using substances at higher rates. So it helps us focus our efforts a little bit more here. And then this asks about, of the students who do use substances, when did they start? The average age of first use. And you'll see here it's really for substances between age 12 up to 14. So we use this information when we talk to parents and guardians, that you should be having conversations with your kids well before high school. Have conversations early and often. Um, because if you're waiting until your kid's 15, 16 years old, kind of too late. So having that regular form of communication and helping parents think about you know, how you have these conversations. It's, it's, not, it's not always easy. We also ask about um, perceived disapproval. So we know and we always encourage parents when we talk to parents in the community that they do matter and their influence is significant on whether or not their child uses substances. So we asked students, how much do you think your parents would disapprove of you using alcohol or using marijuana? And you'll see here, 87% of your kids said, my parents would disapprove. That's great. The higher we get that number, the lower we, the rates of substance use are. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same for marijuana use. Not surprisingly, for peer disapproval, it's a little bit lower, but still. 75% of kids think their peers would disapprove. So it's building that positive culture. Um, and then finally, the perception of harm we ask students, how much do you think drinking alcohol regularly or using marijuana is, would cause <coughs> physical or emotional harm? Alcohol has a uh, perception of harm <coughs> higher than cannabis, which isn't surprising when you consider that cannabis is the most frequently used substance. And so this graph just shows you the variations. So past month use and perception of harm. So you'll see marijuana is the orange bar. It's the most frequently used, again, only 8%, but has the lowest perception of harm. Whereas we see with prescription drug misuse, very low rates of use, and among the highest in terms of perception of harm, peer disapproval, parental disapproval. That is not a coincidence. We've made a lot, you know, we've worked really hard on the dangers of prescription drug misuse, and we see that here reflected in the data. And then finally, we added this question this past year, toxic stress indicators. This was also added to national surveys, the CDC's Youth Risk Behavior Survey. And we know, sort of thinking about adverse childhood experiences. So you'll see here, between seven and 9% of your students, we asked, had they experienced directly seen, heard, or been a victim of violence? in their neighborhood, community, or school. 16.6%, that is not a typo, literally the same percentage in middle school, high school. 16.6% experienced discrimination in the past year. Around 2% have had problems with housing, and then a little bit more students were worried that their family 
did not have enough food to eat or that food would run out. So these are big stressors that young people are experiencing and it helps us think about you know, what that whole picture is, what their lives are like. And then finally, we do ask students if they'd like to see the data that we collect. 42%, no thank you, but we do have students who are really interested. Um, you know, 24% the answer, yes, I love data. And that's where we want to share this data. <laughs> right? I love data, they love data. So we do like to share this with students. And then 17% are like, yes, with a little enthusiasm. But what I find when we share this with our youth council members and others is that students really are interested and they think about it, and they see that their peers are reflective. <coughs> so we definitely encourage you to, you know, to check out our website. The full report is there. Um, I know you have a busy agenda, so I don't want to take up any more time. But my information is on here. My email is here. You'll probably get the slides shared in some way if anyone has any questions or other ways you'd like to see us use this data. And I want to thank the school district because truly we could not do this without really a super, super relationship, so I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Emily? No, I just downloaded the thing, so I'm going to Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, we can now move on to committee reports, uh, starting with policy. Okay, so we met. Um, we have two policies on the consent agenda. Safe school and title loan, <coughs> and um, using Shipman and Goodwin's language for VH for now until the rest of it comes down the line for us to address. Um, so hopefully, folks are okay with that. Um, we did add it to consent because the community was comfortable with Attorney Ritter's description and language that she provided. So that up there. Thank you. Uh, curriculum is next. Uh, yeah, we have uh, basically three items. Uh, we put two of them on the consent agenda. One is um, the adoption of the second step curriculum from Ms. Soler that she presented. Um, and then um, uh, uh, the newcomer curriculum from Ms. Uh, Sylvia Maya Molina is, was also placed on there. And then we had the third item, which is under, uh, you know, for our purview tonight, which was the uh, review and adoption of the Spanish One Course Curriculum. Thank you. <coughs> Personnel? Uh, we met and we have uh, a couple of memorandums of understanding that we uh, went over. And then we had a job description and four position requests that we put on the consent agenda. Thank you. And finance? Finance, we approved uh, quite a few contracts and uh, Security donations and purchase orders, um, most of which are on the consent agenda. We did um, also review the uh, financial transaction report, which is uh, the new business, as well as we reviewed um, a possible contract between the district and uh, Daniel Diaz to start a recruitment process to bring um, new teachers up to Puerto Rico. We decided to to uh, not put that on the consent agenda because we want to hear from Mr. Diaz if possible tonight because we still have some questions uh, about the program. So I believe we're here for that to answer these questions. Thank you. Uh, now moving on to item C, board reports. Does any board member have anything they'd like to share? Go Canes for being Southington. Yeah. Southington after how many years? <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> mm. uh, the uh, marching band is also mid-season with the break, and they participated in their second uh, competition. They're not a competition band. Uh, if there's any band geeks out there, you might know that we have a totally different style in New Britain than anybody else in the Northeast. So we get penalized because we don't fit the same style, but they did score their highest ever this past weekend out in Cheshire in front of 1,200 bands and got an excellent reception from the crowd. So they're doing well. I did want to um, speak about principal over Mr. Soto at the Loretto. He had a family, um, I forgot the technical term he used, but it was like a invitation for parents to come out and talk to him and um, his staff, his vice principal. 
I was able to attend. Um, I, I don't know if any parents are watching now or in, later on, but I would like to say to the parents that I was very disappointed because including myself, I was there was only five parents there. So <clears throat> with all the things that you see on social media and uh, um, opinions, it really doesn't weigh if you're not present in your children's events or okay. even um, these invitations. Mm -hmm. So I do want to congratulate um, the principal and their staff. They're doing great work. Um, and it was a nice uh, experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I was going to say? Um, I know that the month of Hispanic heritage is just seen as like, just I don't know what it's seen as to other people, but it's a lot for me. I. I love being Puerto Rican, but I love celebrating everyone's not being God. And I'm sorry that there wasn't anything formal, at least recognizing from us, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew from me that I've been singing from the mountaintop. Um, happy Hispanic heritage to just everybody. If you want some sazón or some adobo, stop by my house. You're more than welcome to. I got it. My freezer, I'll put it up. Um, and I freeze it in cubes. I'm just saying. I'm country girl. So, just letting you know. But I love celebrating, and I just want to make sure that everybody celebrates too. You can go downtown to any one of our different restaurants or call somebody that knows somebody that's making some that is, and you can cash in too. The other thing is that we also have a community forum. So I need to answer the question right now. Yes, this community forum is for everybody in the community. Everybody. Not just families of kids in the school district. This is for everyone who would, what we would normally call a stakeholder but the stakeholder really is everybody in the community. You have an interest in the community, you are a stakeholder, you live here, you, you know, you slay here, you pray here, you come here, you have, it's not just the ones, and that has been the one question that I keep getting. And at the same time that I say, why don't you email the superintendent, I say, wait a minute, but you have kids in the school district, you have grandchildren in the school district. You matter, I wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity to come in, chime in, and give us an opportunity to be able to hear you listen to you and really be able to process that and please do check in with your kids schools to be able to know when they're going to be having coffee with the principal um, board member Rivera did mention about uh, De Loretto which is a phenomenal school I love him let me tell you so it was fun but they uh, also have done it in the past with uh, Slade that I used to attend as well and it was the same thing where I would report on it Check in with your kid's school, find out when the principal, challenge that principal to be able to have coffee with you. I say coffee, you can have tea, whatever you want. Um, and be able to just sit down and have those conversations and how you could be, um, you know, in more of a collaborative spirit with them. What can we be able to do? Thank you. Mr. President, if I may, I just have one thing. Um, if you can't get someone over at Tina's house. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, Damon, it's Mr. Pierce back here. I believe it's, what is it, next week, next Wednesday? A week from this Wednesday, the 6th, what is it? Yeah, the Hispanic Heritage Celebration over at Vernon High School. If you went to the one last year, it's big. It's, it's supposed to be bigger this year. So. Good luck with that. You're going to be yeah. busy. So um, I'm, I, it's been hyped up to me several times. Yeah. Right? Now I have to definitely be enough time to sneak out, sneak out of class or something. But whatever, we got to do that. Um, but yeah, it's next, thank you. Yeah, it is the 16th. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, now we can move on to student reports. I'd like to welcome Jaden and Zeeley um, to the board. So maybe you guys can introduce yourselves and then get into your report. Uh, my name is Jaden. Uh, if you want my full name, Jaden Cuenca. I'm a fellow, obviously, a fellow uh, student at Newbury High School. And I, me and Azim, she wants to reach out soon, but we want to represent the students well, you know, have that bridge. Yes. Hi, everyone. I am Azim Amerve Roland. I am a senior at Newburn High School, and just like Jaden said, we just want to be the voice of change for the students at Newburn High School. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to share for your report tonight? Uh, we would like to share uh, some things that we've been discussing since uh, last year. Uh, we have this, well, the club is not in yet, it's student council. And uh, we, were, we were discussing about direct policies, how we could like, implement them into the school, how it could be allowable to 
uh, fit them under the Crown Act and how um, the school blocking that, problem, that the Crown Act is like against student rights and uh, have some, I want to hear different views on the grading policy because a lot of students are very much against that and so are the teachers. So I'm hoping to build more evidence on that. Uh, me and Azim will gather more information on that detail. And for me, uh, I would like to put in a good word for Mr. Mr. Atherton. Mr. Atherton. Uh, he is going to be uh, he is the new the perspective yeah. um, student council advisor. And uh, I personally think that he is a perfect advisor for student council due to his strong connection with the students in his classes. From my experience, he has his bright, friendly vibe. His classroom feels welcoming and safe. To add on, he really understands us, and the person I want to have as my advisor for student council will be him. Mm -hmm. And that's all I would like to share for now. Thank you. Okay, we can move on to new business. Uh, starting with item A, approved minutes. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the regular Board of Education meeting on September 3rd, 2024? So I was waiting for him to finish training. I'm sorry. Any comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Extensions. And it's passed. Mm -hmm. Item B, report of personnel transactions. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments? signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. <laughs> Item C, can I have a motion to accept the enrollment report? Second. Any discussion? I would just add to the conversation that um, during this time of year, we typically do see our enrollments rise during the fall. Um, I believe I've mentioned once before to the board, but again, in further conversations with Mr. Pierce, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that Britain High School reaches 2,500 students this year. So that's a substantially strong growth um, if that does come to fruition, and he believes he's seeing a trend that might make that come true. What was this Britain High School? I'm sorry? Keep we believe high. I've just heard the early number three thousand quite often. In the early two thousands. Yeah, so you're about slowly creeping up there. Mm -hmm. I would describe it as the mall of Christmas. We have more than that. So that's when I, I was here at that time visiting with an accreditation visit, and that was two thousand six. And one of the concerns in the report was that it, it was not possible to get to class on time. Yeah. So a few of us on the team Took it took it the task to try to walk from the 500s to the top far corner of the 300s, and it legitimately was not possible to do so in the time allowed. The the corner near the um, near the trophy case and the stairwells, it was simply just not possible to move quickly enough. Even if you didn't stop at the lab or stop at your locker, it simply was not <coughs> possible to get to move quickly enough to get to class on time. No, I remember the mob being sometimes women pushing me aside because the mob was so big. We did extend it, I think, one minute, I think, at the Mr. Yeah, we were, I don't think you were, were you, were you an assistant principal at that time? Or you no. Yeah, we're, we did add one minute or something yeah. after that. Yeah. 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 yeah Even then, I, I wouldn't say 3,000 students is a target we should be <laughs> no. hoping for. No. 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 <laughs> we, we tracked the word phenomenon from my old science room in 318 to the freshman 
academy, when the, when the new wing opened and it was a <coughs> academy, um, to that office was one quarter of a mile. <laughs> so, in, in, indoors. It was faster to go out than go around. Yeah, go, go around. around. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this does play into the board's uh, conversations that you've had and will continue to have about the future of our programs and buildings. Mm -hmm. What is it that you envision for New Britain High School and, and other high school opportunities in town? I mean, you read my mind. Okay, all those in favor, seven, five, nine. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? This is uh, item D, and I have a motion to review and adopt the Spanish One Course Curriculum. Motion. Second. Discussion. Are there any questions for Dr. Maya Williams? As Mr. Escobala said, this has been reviewed by the curriculum committee and has followed our somewhat new four-step process. I just want to say I was here for that presentation, and it was I was very impressed with the data the they presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item E, can I have a motion to approve a contract between CSCNB and consultant Daniel Diaz to support New Britain schools with the marketing and identification and recruitment process of teachers from Puerto Rico for $30,000? So moved. Second. Discussion. Um, is he present here tonight? Mr. Diaz is present. Okay. We have questions. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me to the meeting. So, um, any questions that I can answer? Yes, thank you for being here. Um, like I shared with, um, with the board um, when this was brought to our attention, I do appreciate this, um, this uh, offer, right? But. I wanted to know a little more. I was one of the people who wanted to know a little more about the, the efforts with this proposal. And um, to, well, all clear, to be clear and transparent, um, the amount of money, um, I just want to make sure that it is, there's something concrete, right? So I guess one of the questions I had was, if you can give us a little more background to the work you do, um, how long have you been doing it, and how long have you been uh, a consultant, I believe, right? Is that yes. part of the work you do? Yes, yes. <coughs> so uh, my name is Daniel Diaz. I'm actually, I've been a resident of New Haven, Connecticut for 45 years. I'm actually a product of the bilingual education. Uh, maybe you can tell by the accent. Uh, 45 years and never got rid of it. I, um, I worked in the private sector, now I work in the public sector, but I also, um, on the side, I am a scout, what I call a scout or independent recruiter that supports districts uh, across the country in making sure that they um, bring teachers, qualified teachers, to their district. As we all know, um, there is a shortage nationally of teachers and uh, many of the districts, um, specifically urban districts, have a large amount of uh, students who are Latino. Latino in some districts is over 50% of the population. However, it's become to be very difficult for districts to recruit qualified teachers that are Latino. And uh, in the case of my, my um, experience, it is in Puerto Rico. Um, I worked for 15 years recruiting. Um, I'll give you a little background. In the last three years, I started with, um, uh, actually, I worked for 15 years recruiting for Texas, Florida, and Connecticut. The last three years, I brought over 45 teachers to Connecticut, uh, specifically in New Haven and also Hartford, through in a Paso a Paso. Uh, program that they had and they began maybe four years ago. 
They contacted me after the first year because they needed some support in Puerto Rico with this program. Um, in the last, um, I would say the last three years, uh, we brought close to 20 teachers to Hartford, Connecticut. I also brought around uh, maybe 20, 22 teachers to New Haven, Connecticut. And I also work with Winnet County in Atlanta, uh, which we are, we've just finished a contract with them. And in the first year, they hire approximately seven teachers. They're now continuing the process. Uh, as you know, those districts in the last couple of years, they had a lot of money because it was through ESSER and also the ARP. So they were offering um, huge incentives for teachers to come and work at their districts. Um, that has dwindled down due to the fact that as of September 30th, a lot of those funds had to be used. Um, why, why Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico, as we all know, is part of the United States. It's only three hours from Hartford. And uh, Puerto Rico has a large amount of professionals not only qualified teachers, but they also offer professionals who are changing to teaching. So I also work with Teach for America. I am a consultant with them because they are bringing individuals who are not certified in Connecticut, but they are actually supporting them in getting that certification so that they can also work in districts in Connecticut, although some um, participants have decided to go into other states. Um, Puerto Rican teachers, what they do when they come uh, to the U.S., I also follow them through. I have several groups that I work with. Uh, WhatsApp is, is awesome. And um, I, when they come, for example, into New Haven and Hartford, those are the districts that I'm more familiarized with in, in Connecticut that I've been working in the last three years. You know, we work with them to make sure that they get housing. Um, it is economic development. I mean, I mean, the 16 teachers that we hired the first year for Hartford, they all lived in Hartford. All their kids went to Hartford. And some of their spouses got jobs in Hartford public schools as tutors or they can work as helpers. In New Haven, the same thing has happened. Uh, I think two of them purchase houses. They live in New Haven. And uh, so to me, it helps. Uh, our students because it enriches our students. It enriches the community that they're working at because other teachers learn from them. This is not about filling the schools with Puerto Rican teachers, right? This is about bringing diversity to a districts or to districts that lack that diversity so that our students become enriched. They enrich the teachers and the teachers enrich the community that they work with. Um, so I, I do believe that there are opportunities still in Puerto Rico. Why also, and the other answer to the question, why Puerto Rico? Everybody knows that New Britain has a very large Puerto Rican community. Uh, so those Hartford, so those main city, a lot of the main cities in Connecticut. Um, and the, the teachers that are coming from Puerto Rico, many of them have roots in Connecticut. They have family in Connecticut. Um, I know that you're starting a Spanish one. So it's kind of interesting, before I walked into the meeting, I got a teacher from Puerto Rico who was certified in Connecticut and was working in, in New Haven at, uh, many years ago and said, oh, I want to go back to Connecticut to work. And he's actually a Spanish teacher for high school. So, um, and I said, oh, actually, I'm, I'm at a meeting and you greet them, maybe they'll call you for an interview. <laughs> um, so, um, and I, I've stayed in contact with a lot of those teachers. Like I said, they, they have, great networks in Puerto Rico. I know it's easy to go to Puerto Rico, get in a car, rent a car, and just travel and go to other places. But it's establishing those connections. It's establishing the network. And as you know, it is all about who you know and who you work with. I have an MOU with a university, a Catholic university in um, Ponce. I also have an MOU with UPR and with Ana Jimenez. They have approximately I will say uh, several campuses throughout the island. I also visit schools. I, every time I, I go to Puerto Rico, around six times a year. Um, I have tables promoting the district that I'm working with. The individuals who show interest in New Britain, for example, that's proprietary to New, England, to, to New Britain. That list is given to New Britain. All those 
people who are interested, all those candidates, we give them to um, New Britain. If New Britain doesn't hire, right, then we have to give them opportunities in other, in other locations. It's only fair they want to look for a job. Um, I did a survey recently, around 270 candidates that I had throughout the years, just asking them what do they want when they moved to another place? Because they have to lift everything. A lot of them, because you know they, they're looking for incentives, a lot of them want pension. A lot of them want good schools for their kids if they have children. Many of them are saying they just want job security. In Puerto Rico, you don't become a permanent employee. You could be 10 years in a district and you're not permanent. Uh, you could retire sometimes and there's no permanency. So here, you know, first time, good health insurance. Um, what's the age? There is diverse. There is a younger, uh, the younger uh, uh, individuals, of course, is tough because they don't have the money to start them someplace else, so that's why incentives become better for them. Um, but then you have the retired teachers, which retire at very early ages, and, and they're amazing teachers. But what happened was that in Puerto Rico, their pension was cut in half. And as a result of that, they cannot survive on a pension. So many of them are in their 50s and they just want to come back and teach and hopefully retire in 10, 15 years at a reasonable age and they can still live and have a quality of life. Um, so that's a little bit about myself. I'm sorry I spoke too much, but uh, I just wanted to give you some background um, on what I did, why I do what I do, because um, I was enriched by those teachers when I went to school. I had a diverse, uh, group of teachers uh, from all ethnic backgrounds. Uh, they enrich my life. So I believe that by you having a diverse group of teachers will not only enrich the students, it will enrich us all. It will help us all. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Yeah, my questions are not so much for you, sir. I appreciate all the information. Mm -hmm. That was very helpful. Um, mine are more, you mentioned about incentives. Um, you mentioned about um, when you're at these fairs, so um, New Britain's material, for lack of a better word, would not be the only material at the table? No, it will be the only material at the table. It would be the only yeah. material at the yeah. table. Yeah, it will. Okay. So if you're working with four mm -hmm. us, it's exactly. us at the table. So I, I provided them with a timeline, which of course is certain days are to be determined, but it's the timeline of what I will be doing for New Britain. For example, um, in November, I'm going to be going, if this goes through, mm -hmm. I will be going in November and I have already several appointments with several universities where I'm gonna have a table representing New Britain. Uh, they tomorrow. Have an open house, I believe. Huh? They have an open, they have an open house. house, I believe. Exactly, yeah, they, they do some open houses. Some of them, they're just, because they know me, they allow me to have a table. Um, I will be also at uh, the University of Puerto Rico, which they have a major fair in March. Um, and I will, you know, I want to be there. I have an MOU with them, so I don't have to go through the whole process of building an MOU. Um, and then I will be visiting uh, several universities throughout the year. One tomorrow, actually, I will do it virtually. I'm going to do a presentation to approximately 25 graduate students at a graduate class that are studying pedagogy, and I am going to be talking to them about opportunities for work. So in this case, it will be New Britain, the district that I will be representing. I do some work for other districts, but when I go specifically based on my timeline, I represent that district. So it is interesting, oh, I'm sorry, it is interesting also just to let you know that I am getting candidates when, when I recruit for Puerto Rico, because it's been spread around the world, is, is, is running around that Danny was retire, um, um, recruiting. I, I have a candidate, for example, from Chicago, who happens to be Puerto Rican, but she read through my um, the news that I sent to the university. I have candidates from Florida that call me now. So it's kind of interesting that they are they're coming from not just Puerto Rico. Virtually are the interviews sometimes. Sometimes they can be in person. Um, but what happens is that many districts, they go there and they stand behind the table, hopefully that they come. And I tell them, if you build it, that doesn't mean they're gonna come. You need to go to them. So usually what I do is when they go, if I go with a group from New, um, New Britain that, that week, not only will they be maybe at a table, right, with me, providing information 
but they will also have candidates to interview so that, that it is a time well spent. Okay. And, and I guess I just am curious as to mm -hmm. what exactly you're presenting. Are you presenting incentives from the district? Are you, I mean, I guess I don't know what's mm -hmm. been approved from that aspect yeah. either and what that may mean for us. So a part of the our increase in educator diversity grant, I've actually been working with the State Department of Education and Dr. Tucker, um, and we did put in some incentives for housing assistance that we will be talking about. Um, Superintendent and I will be looking to talk to the mayor about that as well because again, I went to a, a conference at um, CCSU and they talked about housing um, insecurity, so that was a part of the work and um, allowing and asking the state, is it okay for us to use a portion of that increase in educated diversity grant to incentivize for housing assistance? Okay, um, does that include too, because there's another item in here about purchasing advertising, is that grant gonna cover this $5,000? All of that is put in the grant, yes. That is in the grant, okay. And then um, I noticed there was as far as um, staff tour, as far as bringing folks from the New Britain team, I don't know how many that is or whatever, is that expense covered under this grant too? Okay. Yes, actually. Sorry, So can I add, um, Ms. Marino, Everything that is a part of this presentation is actually also a part of our increasing educator diversity plan that we approved last year. Right. And it was underneath the alignment of cultivating connections where it specifically talked about going to Puerto Rico. So again, with working closely with Dr. Tucker and her team um, because of the work here in New Britain, and I know Mr. Escobar has per, um, shared some data that I should have. Um, they're really on board with us in trying to continue to expand those connections with the State Department of Education. Right. I, I think those were some things that the other night when we di didn't have some of that info. And I, I think that's, that this has been helpful. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to add also that my job is not to do this forever. With New Britain, my job is to help you, right? Show you the way and you can take it from there. So at the end, I will provide you with list of contacts. Okay. Because as you know, um, just like any district, people change jobs, so I have to update those lists. I will provide that. I will also provide you know, press, press information where you could do the stuff. So next year, if you don't need me, it's fine. I'm, I am here to help students and, uh, and to help you uh, build a diverse team of teachers. Mm -hmm. So um, next year, you will say, that's what Winnet County did this year. They're like, ah, we're going to go on our own. I'm like, perfect. And I had a couple of candidates, even though I, I was not working with them, that were interested in Atlanta. I'd rather have a teacher go to Atlanta and enrich students than come to Connecticut wanting to be in Atlanta. So we have teachers that call us all the time. I want to be here. I want to be there. That's fine. Just go there. That's no problem. So my <coughs> job is to build that for you, and then you can take it from there. Well, interesting you mentioned like Chicago and Florida. There's other <laughs> yeah. connections, not just for you. Exactly, you exactly. Okay, uh, Mr. Kane. Um, Mr. B, I say for coming tonight. Um, I was the one who originally proposed to Dr. Sanders because um, I work in Hartford. In fact, you guys placed three teachers in my building over the last two years. I'm you figured like your feature in the articles that you submitted mm -hmm. are the packet. Mm -hmm. You featured two of them. Of those three, only one is left. Mm -hmm. One of the three um, took a, a day off, said, I have to take tomorrow off for a doctor's appointment in November of that year. We're still waiting to come back to that doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. um, I was assigned to mentor all three of them. And the biggest issue we heard, I heard from them, all three, those first couple weeks, is how different the education culture is in Puerto Rico versus Connecticut. Yes. How the students act, how the parents act, how the administration act. 
And it was a major culture shock that they felt they were not prepared for. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of them even mentioned to you by name. Yeah. That they felt they were not prepared. Yeah. What are, now, we're hearing that, and now that you've been doing the program two years out, what will you do differently that would have mm -hmm. read than you uh, knew their Harper and other schools to repair the re recruits for the difference in the education system in, in, in the mainland versus Puerto Rico? Yeah. Okay, so out of the 16 teachers that we hired for her for the first year, it, that was a out of the ordinary year, to be honest with you. It, it was a large amount, but it was because that was the first year that in Puerto Rico they cut the pension. And it, everybody wanted to, to leave the island, uh, uh, specifically well, retired teachers, year. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the 16 teachers, two of them did uh, leave, so that's a 90 something percent, which I'm very proud of, because I do know working in education myself, you get a lot of, there is a lot of movement uh, every year. So yes, we did have two teachers from Hartford. We also had two teachers from New Haven out of the 20 that did leave. One of them left in November, you're absolutely correct. I did talk to him about it because I was a, a bit frustrated. He had come from a private school environment if I'm correct about that one in particular. And it was tough for him, uh, to for the teacher, I'm sorry, to adapt to, to an environment here in Connecticut. Um, so yes, um, I think my advice, what we've learned uh, along the way is that districts need to do onboarding and also work with the teachers. So if you're hiring a teacher for September, start earlier on and do an onboarding, helping them to adapt. Because once again, it's, uh, they're gonna come to enrich our students, but we also have to enrich them. Mm -hmm. And they're two completely different systems. Um, just as if you have a teacher from New York coming here, it, they're different. The syst we, we are one nation, but we are very different in, in, in our regionalisms. And even within Connecticut, sometimes you see a difference between Hartford, New Britain, and Westport, mm -hmm. specifically funding-wise, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we have to work with it. That's one of the things I absolutely agree with you, that we need to work uh, the district. I'm a scout. I get you the names. I provide you with the names of qualified individuals. Once the district interviews and hires them, I do follow through them in helping them and saying, to them, okay, connect here for housing, do this. But when it comes to the corporate culture of the district that falls on the hands of the human resources department. They need to do the onboarding. It's extremely important to do that. Um, just getting their license is dif different here. Just applying for health insurance is different here than is over there because they have a more socialized medicine. So it's, it's helping them because we know they're gonna help us. But out of those 14, they're still there. We hire, so that I can always, uh, we hire around four, five teachers two year, um, a year ago. Sadly enough, two of them left, but it wasn't because they wanted to leave. It's because Harper went last year, as we all know, through a layoff period. And they were the last two that were hired because of union contract. They actually ended up getting a job right away in Manchester, and one of them went to um, Springfield Mass, uh, actually she was living in New Britain, and uh, the, it, it wasn't their fault, and they just had to be laid off, and, and that, that was a fact of life. And that's one thing that I also explained to them, that also you have permanency, mm -hmm. that you are at the bottom when it comes to seniority. If something happens, you could be the first one. And those are things that have to be explained to them, because you know they're crossing 1,500 miles to get here. We need to be you know, empathetic, uh, um, we need to have empathy to that and explain it to them in the boarding process. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members have questions? So will the expectation be, um, and I just want to be completely transparent with you, I'm quite familiar with mm -hmm. all of the universities that you listed here on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, and I especially like the Catolica just because it's across the street from the museum that I hold. Oh, okay. Too. Um, which, and I did wait until after they rebuilt, just letting you know. <laughs> so, um, so the reason why I'm asking you, I'm just curious. I'm a parent advocate, I have special needs kids. Mm -hmm. What areas of teaching 
are you looking for? I mean, I'm always looking for more spec ed teachers, but I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning, holds up a sign, and says, I'm the one you're looking for. Well, that lays on the district. The district will tell us what areas they're looking for. Um, I, I'm glad you're a parent. I, many of people who know me, I am also a parent engaged. I'm a parent advocate. That's what my job is during the day. I do this. My job as a consultant, I work after hours on the weekends and on, on holidays, anytime I have free. But I am a parenting advocate, so I understand what you're talking about and the need of having. Um, Yes, um, whatever the district tell me, they say they have five openings, they might have an opening in, in Spanish, then I will, when I send the information to the Catholic University, we'll do a flyer, which I will help you put together, and that will go to the university. When we do the radio uh, presentation, we'll say we're looking for teachers in bilingual education, in math, in, in uh, English as a second language, uh, special education, uh, so that way when people apply. Also, um, what's happening, and I know that you have a program that is very similar uh, to um, the ARC, which you actually help students uh, or individuals who are interested in teaching. So we have a lot of math majors, a lot of science majors that might be interested in being teachers, right? So and those, those can be hired and then put through the program, which is a um, alternate route to certification, but I know it's called the apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. So those you have uh, individuals who might be interested in also coming here, um, which is very similar to TFA, but um, I think your program is a bit more, uh, a bit stronger than that program. So um, so yeah, special education, if they are, I mean, that's, that's across the board, that's mm -hmm. one of the top um, areas where uh, school districts are looking for special education. And I but science I, also. Science as well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I do see the differences even when I go back home because I do go, I, to me that's home. When I go back home I do see, um, and I'm saying because I always joke around mm -hmm. about breaking bread and I really do go break bread with people and bring bread back. Mm -hmm. So I look at the fact that when you are down there as a consultant, I may have met you at a table rocking Chicago. Just putting it out there, I'm not saying that that's what you would be rocking. But yeah. they advertise a lot because they put a lot of money, yeah. and I'm pretty sure you've seen them walking into a bono, walking into Mr. Special, you would have seen them right there. Yeah. Okay, so when you're there advertising for New Britain, mm -hmm. but I would have seen you repping Chicago two weeks yeah. ago, Yeah. not saying that would have been the timeline, just mm -hmm. using it as an example, how do we know that the person that you are then speaking to really is going to be, wait a minute, you know, like, hold on, i got to switch hats. I've changed my sweatshirt. Now it says Kane's on the front, yeah. and now I can speak to you about New Britain. Mm -hmm. I can no longer speak to you about Chicago. What no. about if that's an example of what? So, so TFA, have? for example, TFA, I'll give an example. TFA is looking only for juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. So there is no competition with TFA here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the other district that I'm currently working with was Hartford. Mm -hmm. Hartford wanted five <coughs> teachers. Mm -hmm. I actually just sent them two teachers because I'm, I'm, I don't have any contract with anybody else at this point. This year I'm just kind of taking it easy because I have an L a mom who's getting older, so I'm trying to work with her as well. Mm -hmm. um, so no, most people, like I said, if a person comes to me mm -hmm. right, and says to me, I want to work in New Britain, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to tell the person work for Chicago mm -hmm. because they told me they want to work for New Britain. Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I don't want a teacher who comes to New Britain but wants to be in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm not working with Atlanta. So this year, this is the people that I'm going to be working with, so I'll be open with you. Mm -hmm. TFA, I'm working with TFA. Mm -hmm. I'm working with Hartford on a very small amount of teachers that they want. Um, they, I think they want, I, I think less than five teachers, she told me. And you will be the main person that I will be recruiting for and where this is your year. Mom? And I'm not taking yeah. any more contracts, as I said, because I have to. I have to. <laughs> I have a lot of things, and I also run a non-for-profit organization. So. And you still currently teach? No, I'm not a teacher. Uh, my dream was to become a teacher. I come from the <laughs> private sector. I wanted to be a math teacher. Just to get out there. I know. <laughs> I was. Um, I actually took the praxis one and the praxis two. I passed it for math, but then I was hired by a district to work as a parent advocate, and I became a parent engagement. 
Um, I'm also the making event liaison. Um, I've talked about the importance of supporting homeless students. So I know districts very well. I know the components of district. I know what districts are looking for. Um, so that's why when I send candidates to a district, I send candidates who want to be there and candidates who are qualified to do the job. Um, <coughs> but once again, um, you might have one or two candidates. It's, let's be honest, it happens, you know? And, and it happens with people we hire on a year-to-year -year basis. They work for two or three years and they leave. That is a fact of life, and it's a fact of recruitment. Uh, but I asked them, and in the case of what uh, the gentleman mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, I was pretty upset. I kind of blackballed that person. I sent it to all the recruiters, and I sent the name, and I said, absolutely not. I don't recommend this person for any other place because they left my kids. Being hard for being new, they're my kids. Mm -hmm. and, and I told them they left them behind in November. And I, that's absolutely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So he, and he's called me to get another job, and I said, no, no. And I, I told all the recruiters that I know, absolutely not. So I think somebody had a hand on the right side here. Yeah, and I just, I don't have a question. I just have a statement. I'm looking at your package you put together here, and I just want to say, I like it, and I like the fact that you have a timeline, and you tell them everything that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm satisfied with what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the timeline changes sometimes because some of the universities have not stated when they're going to have the the fairs. We know there's going to be a fair in, in uh, March. Uh, in November, I had put to do a familiarization uh, tour uh, with New Britain, and of course, you're welcome. Um, I already have several universities that I'm going to be visiting. Uh, during that time, I have a, a presentation tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm presenting as, as a recruiter. These are opportunities. This is what you need. Assistance, as of now, I'm not stating the, the, the town or the city that I'm working with. I'm just presenting them. Um, and then, I mean, there's around, uh, they told me between 25 and 30 people. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about tomorrow's presentation. I already made a presentation also uh, to the University of Puerto Rico Ponce, which is very close to Catholic University. Um, I did a presentation to around 26 students. Why do I do those presentations? Because they're the future. And these are all pedagogy students who are juniors and seniors. So now we're building the idea, hey, you can travel to the US, you can uh, teach in, in Connecticut. So that's why many people, when they recruit in universities, they don't do a lot of recruitment because these are students, right? But you're building an audience for the future. And those are the ones that now are calling me. I just had two students who just call me. They're now one year into teaching. And they're like, we want to come to Connecticut because we have family in Connecticut. So. That's building audiences for the future. And that's what I said. I'll do this for you this year, and next year you'll take it from there. And now you have an established pathway to continue your recruitment. The familiarization tour will be for the one or two staff members to go with me to the universities. I will introduce them to the people that I work with so that they could be a familiarization, oh, when they pick up the phone, I need an English teacher, can you post that in the future? Hey, you know, I remember Miss Sanders, I re you know? Um, so, you know, Dr. Velasquez, I, I remember them, you know, let's, let's, you know, I had a meeting with them. So that's what I'm saying, uh, to build relationships. It's all about relationships, and uh, you know, um, it, you need to build those relationships to have continuity in the work that you do and to build that reputation, so. And I want to do that for you, if, if you allow me to. Mr. Diaz, thank you so much for coming to speak to You're us. welcome. We had a lot of thank questions. Um, thank you so much for coming all the way up here. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Happy Hispanic Month. We're such an intimidating crowd. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. 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 How many teachers will we recruit this year? Well, our focus, as we said today, was with um, um, special education. Um, so depending on our vacancies, um, and the biggest part that we talked about is because we have our apprenticeship program. 
and um, they're going to have for a math certification as well as special education services. And again, because we are part of the apprenticeship, that's also a part of the grow your own piece that I talked about last week that I would really like to focus on because at least that will give them the 10, 18 months or that 10 months with that mentor teacher where they're actually learning how to grow and be a teacher here in the district. And in, in Mr. King, what happens is they do have a mentor underneath the apprenticeship model. And again, one of the things that we talked to, about to Danny is how do we continue those wraparound services? So if we do hire someone, the idea is we're gonna start mentorship immediately. And that's also written in the IED grant where it has to be lucrative to be an extremely good mentor. And there are things we're gonna follow the apprenticeship model as well where the mentor has to meet a, a particular criteria to make sure that that happens as well. I think we team certified to be a mentor. Certified? Team there's certified. A, um, yes, but there's a criteria that we can use that's more <coughs> extensive than team mentorship that we use for the apprenticeship model. And are they compensated for being a mentor? They will be compensated well. How much? Um, so, um, what we wrote in the grant, I think, was about $2,000. Right here? Yes. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> roll. Uh, Ms. Edwards, can you do a roll call vote for this, please? Absolutely. Madam <clears throat> President Joseph Bistro? Yes. Uh, Ms. Barbara Marino? Yes. Ms. Diane Reyes? Yes. Anthony Kane with the C? Yes. Salvador Estevalis? Absolutely. Anthony Kane with the K? Yes. Ms. Annie Parker? Yes. Ms. Jumpina? Yes. Ms. Jose Rivera? Yes. And Ms. Tina Santana? Yes. Oh, the motion passes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to our last item on new business, um, I have a motion for item F to set finance report through August 30th, 2024. So Second. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> 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 Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Two nays, three, three. Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Um, consent agenda. Would anyone like to take anything off tonight? I would like to remove item P, please. P? P. Okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> anything else? For uh, to approve a grant from the Office of Early Childhood to fund pilot program, enhancing parent outreach ambassadors' effort within the community for one hundred forty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. So, second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Unopposed. And abstentions. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> And now we can move on to, um, oh, I'm sorry. Can I have a motion to pass the consent agenda? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent passes. And now we can move to item five, executive session. I'd like a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing the superintendent's contract. So moved. This will be with the full board and we'll possibly call the superintendent in. Okay. It has a statute, it's right. We are now out of executive session. 
Do I have a motion? Yes, I move that we accept the superintendent's contract uh, under terms to be negotiated until June 30th of 2027. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it very much. I'm happy to work here. Motion to adjourn. Why is that funny? We haven't gotten to tomorrow night's meeting. I'm happy to work here. We'll see if you say that after tomorrow night. Is there any other business tonight? I have one item. I'm really sorry. Um, can I have a motion to approve delegates for the Cape Conference? So moved. I think Tito wants to be one. <laughs> yeah. We need uh, two delegates. We could also appoint um, an alternate. So the um, delegate assembly happens on Thursday night. I don't know. Do you remember the date? Oh, my God. I don't 14th? remember the exact date, which, uh, but Asia already has it. The night before. It's 14th. Yeah. Because the conference is 15th and 16th. So each board of education is allowed two delegates. Um, they have to be approved by the board. Um, we can do this in yeah. November, but by the time it's the only reason why I requested it to be done now is because I have um, special needs children and one in palliative care, and I just want to make sure that my daughter is going to be able to. That's fair. So that's the only reason. So we have one interested delegate. Is there another? It's a school night, sir. I know. I'd be happy to delegate. Mm -hmm. We had fun. I thought we had fun. Nice dinner. Yeah. Let me have coffee. <laughs> you know, you'd be happy for anywhere to give you coffee in five pots. Right? Yeah. Busy enough to share with you. I had three. <laughs> so we have. Yeah, to, you'd be in a missile firing range and hand you a cup of coffee and be happy. I know. All right, so we've got um, Tina. So, the, yeah, two delegates would be Tina and myself if we approve the motion. We'll go vote. Um, and then if anyone's planning on attending the Cape Conference, Please message Asia for the registration and just copy me. Already did it. Perfect. Okay. I will email tomorrow, but I'm on it. Yeah, but it's a great opportunity to support your superintendent too, because see, he's there. You would like to be an alternate, and then Miss Reyes for an alternate. What? I brought magazines last time. And uh, I guess that's it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Now we can adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second